Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to draw hair. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. I want to throw this out as a disclaimer. This is not a best techniques for graphite tutorial. What I'm really focusing on here, I wanted to do something very quick. It's fairly rushed, but I want to talk about the shape of the hair, getting the movement of the hair, and what to watch out for when you are drawing hair. So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about will apply no matter which medium you work in. If you're supporters over on Patreon, I do have the real-time version of this tutorial available for you now, so you can head over and check that out. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this tutorial. As you can see, the first thing that I did was to sketch out the general shape and movement of the hair, and that is going to vary completely depending on your reference photo. Make sure you have a reference photo. I can't stress that enough. It's really easy to think we all know how to draw hair. We all know what hair looks like, and it never comes out looking realistically if you do not have that reference photo. So make sure you start with a decent reference photo, and I'm starting here. I've drawn out my general movement, the general shapes, and now I'm blocking in the actual shapes. You can see I'm not drawing in each individual strand. That is the biggest mistake that I see people make when they're drawing hair is they try to draw in each individual strand and in turn they end up making the hair look very wiry, very dirty, almost zombie-like. Make sure that you don't do that. Look at how I've got those general shapes, the lights and the darks blocked in. I'm copying my reference photo as far as how the these shapes curve and you want to think of this more in terms of abstract shapes than as hair. One of the best things you can do for yourself is work upside down. If you flip your work and your reference photo upside down, it forces your brain into looking at those abstract shapes instead of thinking, I'm drawing hair, so I have to draw in all these strands. It's not about drawing in all of these individual strands. You can see I've got a few wisps, but not that many. Mostly, I'm just blocking in these shapes, paying attention to my lights and my darks. And this is going to be the same no matter what medium you're working in, you want to follow these abstract shapes. Now the next tip I have for you is don't just think that each individual clump that you draw out is all going to be the same color or the same value. Every strand of hair or every clump of hair is going to change. You're going to have shadows and highlights and a lot of variation in there depending on how the light is hitting it. If you try to draw in all of these individual clumps, different colors or different values, solid all the way down from the top of the head to the bottom, that will give you a very cartoony look, which is fine if that's what you're going for. But if you're trying to go for realistic hair, you're going to have a lot of shadows on each individual clump of hair. You can see I've got huge variation. This girl has very light hair, but look how many different values I've got in there with the lights and the darks. That's a big thing. Get your contrast in there. Get your shadows where they need to go. You can see I am working that pencil in the general direction of the strands of hair, but I'm only putting a few of them in. I don't want tons of individual lines either. Just think about when you look at somebody. You don't look at them and see each individual strand of hair on their head. You see the clumps of hair. I'm gonna make sure that this is moving in the direction of the photo. Now, one thing I will tell you, I do not copy my photo exactly. When I draw hair, there, there's just so much detail. I go for close. When I'm drawing the face, the face needs to be exact. But as far as the hair goes, if one strand of hair is a little off, no one is going to know the difference. So I'm not going to spend an extra eight hours making sure every strand is perfect. It's up to you if you wanna work that way, go for it. I personally don't like to work that way. So I just need to create the texture and the movement and have it still look like that person's hair. So each individual strand, some of these may be a little off, no big deal. Notice how the areas near her neck and around her jawline, how much darker that gets. It's not because her hair is necessarily that much of a different color. Yes, the hair in that area will be slightly darker because the sun doesn't bleach it out, but you're still going to have more shadows there because of the way that the, the face and the neck is casting shadow. So in most cases, most people, when you're drawing their hair, that is going to be a darker area. I'm just following the shapes on my reference photo. 
And if you feel like you're getting lost, break it down into one or two square inches. You don't have to do all of the hair at once. One of the ways that I will often work is go through a large chunk and get in all my midtones and then all my highlights and all my shadows, then go back through and refine it. That can get overwhelming though, depending on how large that area is. So you can break it up into small, small sections if you need to, because again, we're not trying to do a strand of hair moving, you know, one pencil line from the top of her head to the bottom where her hair ends. That won't look natural anyway. So there's no reason you can't break this up by one or two square inches and work on a small area at a time. But that will help you to have a little bit more control and not feel so overwhelmed with all of these different shapes. So here I'm just very loosely being very messy, blocking in my general values. Use the shading tool to get them darker. Now I'm coming back through with some of my shadows. And here is my Tombow Mono Eraser. I love that eraser. I'm going through and pulling out highlights with that one. And that one will give me really nice fine lines and it's very easy to control. Not so much with the electric eraser. I used to really depend on that electric eraser for my highlights, but it is a lot harder to control and the lines aren't quite as thin as what you will get with the Tombow Mono Eraser. So more often than not, this is the one that I'm reaching for. Now, one thing I do want to point out in this tutorial, I'm being very messy, very sloppy. You notice I don't have glassine or anything under my hand protecting the paper like I normally would. If you are working on a serious project, protect your paper, put something under your hand, keep everything very clean. But this is just a quick sketch, so I'm not too worried about that here. You can see that little strand that I was just working on, that wisp that sticks out. It's lighter on part of it, and then part of that same strand gets darker. This is These are the shadows I was talking about, where each individual strand is not one solid value, one solid color. You've got variation in there with your lights and your darks on each individual clump. And I'm just going to keep building and keep layering and adding more and more detail until I get it to look how I want it to. Getting some more of the darks in here, especially on the bottom section, there needs to be a lot of dark areas, dark clumps. The dark clumps that I'm doing here, it's not that her hair is dark, you know, super dark that she's got black strands in her hair. These are the shadows. These are the in-between sections of the hair. This is what's going to help it to look more three-dimensional. And again, it's going to feel like it makes no sense as you're working on it because they do. They are essentially abstract shapes. Just trust your reference photo and work on copying what you see there. You know, you will get to the point where the more hair you've drawn or painted, the less you're going to be as dependent on that reference photo. You're always going to want to look at either a model or a reference photo as you draw hair, but you'll get to the point where you don't have to stare at it quite as much while you're working on it. When you're new, Plan on spending more time looking at that reference photo than you do your actual artwork. Keep looking at it. Keep noticing the little details. And when you first start, it's going to feel overwhelming. Like, I, there's no way I'm going to see all of this. There's just so many details. There's so much going on. The more you paint and draw, the easier that is going to get for you. You'll start noticing stuff that you never would have noticed before. Just keep at it. Do not give up. So here I'm coming through now. Everything's fairly messy. So what I'm doing now from this point on is going back through and cleaning up edges. Adding little highlights as needed. And it's at this point that I'm going to come back through and start adding all of these little wisps. Now these little individual strands, there's not many of them, but they make a huge difference in making the work look more realistic. You'll see in the finished photo where I've come back through, I've overlapped some of these wisps over the hair, the big clumps I've got in there and on the outside edges of her head. But it will definitely give it more texture, make it look more realistic. If you don't add any of the individual strands, then your hair ends up looking more like clay. It doesn't look wispy or realistic at all. So you will want some individual strands. You just don't want all the hair to be individual strands. To get these wisps, some of them I'm doing with my Tombow Mono Eraser, overlapping that over the hair that's already there, and then underlining it with a darker pencil just so it stands out a little bit more. 
And then for the hair that is kind of overlapping into the background, that I'm just using my pencil for and I'm keeping a very light hand through that. I'm not pushing very hard. And then I'm coming back through with just a few little darker areas on parts of that. Like I was saying before, not all of the strands, just part of it will have shadows. My last tip on this is take your time. Do not rush this. That's one of the other reasons that hair a lot of people have problems with because they put all of their attention, all of their focus on the face, and then they move on to the hair and they rush through it. They think that it's not as important. The hair usually will take me longer than the portrait, the face itself. The hair is extremely time consuming. This little sketch took me an hour. If I was going to do this on a serious portrait, I would put at least three hours into it. It's only, I want to say it's about an eight by 10. I could be wrong on that. It's not very big. Take your time. Don't rush it. That is one of the biggest things that will cause problems in your hair looking realistic is if you try to rush through it. It is time consuming. It is very tedious. That's totally normal. Don't get frustrated. Just keep practicing with it. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the real-time version of this tutorial is available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's kind of funny looking at this because I have handprints all over the place because I was lazy and didn't put paper under my hand to protect it. So, you know, if you're doing real artwork, protect your work. Put glassine or tracing paper or something under your hands to prevent that smudge. So this is totally unrelated to this video, but as soon as I'm finished here, I am headed to the Dallas World Aquarium to try to get photos of fish and I think they have birds and some other stuff for some of the upcoming Patreon rewards. But I don't know how well this is going to go because when I looked online, there were very mixed reviews. Some people loved it. Some people thought it was the worst thing they'd ever been to and they felt like they were trapped in like sardines with other people and that there weren't that many fish. But I'm okay with taking pictures of birds too, so. So Desmond, my camera, and Jeremy are off for an adventure. Wish us luck.